Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Plants vs. Zombies. We're on level 3 too. Let's do it. So we just started World 3 last video. Beat World 3 1. We're in the backyard, baby. Check out that pool. Who has a fucking pool like that? Just a straight pool all the way across their yard. Super thin like that. Some loser, I'll tell you that. Anyway, our essentials here. Um, trust me when I say squashes will start to be essential for you. You will always use them. Um, they will almost even take the place of a potato mine, I'd say, because they're super cheap. You could set them out early and you can set them out uh, ahead of time and they take no time to charge like the potato mine. The potato mine is a little bit cheaper, so it's it's more, you know, sun savvy, but it's really not enough. Um, I think they charge about the same time, so if you want to pick both, it's really cool. Anyways, we're working with eight slots now, so we can do that. We've really got nothing else to do, I mean... We're going to go with Peters, we're going to go with Walnuts, Cherry Bombs, sure. Um, this whole extra slot makes things so different. Might as well go with the Potato Mine and, um... You know, I'm just going to go with fucking regular repeater or Peters on this level. Pea Shooters. Might as well. And of course, I'll show you guys the Squash. Show you guys the Squeesh. Throw that lily pad out. It's kind of stupid. I'm not going to have enough sun for my Sunflower now. Would have been planting it right now. Not like it'll make a difference, but still, it's okay. You just see when, you know, when you have so little sun and you see one of those plants light up, you want to use it, you know? You just want to use it, man. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys the squash here. So you can set him out anytime. I'm going to set him over here. He's, he's a ugly motherfucker, but, you know, he gets the job done with his moles and his pimples. Right. I'm just going to show you him now to show him, and then I'll start using the potato mine. But basically, when a zombie gets one, as soon as he comes into the square next to him, so it's going to look like he's two squares away, but really he's one. He just triggers it as soon as he, like, is in that square. And then look, he'll look over at him. Boom. Instant kill. Will instant kill almost any zombie in the game. So, and he's already recharged. Look at that. But we're going to go potato mine this time. It's cost effective, you know. Din, din, din. The music starts getting really groovy in these fucking levels. Add that little bell sound. Bum, bum. It's one of the other real brilliant things about this game too is the soundtrack. Beautifully simple and like kind of cutesy and childish, you know, but it's at the same time it fits this game perfectly because that's this whole, you know, this game might seem like kind of kiddie to a lot of people and it kind of is in its, you know, idea but its execution is flawless, you know, like, it decided to go with this idea, and it just ran with it, dude, they went full on, like, you can't half-ass commit to it, like, they're like, okay, Plants vs. Zombies is kind of a kitty game concept, whatever, and they're like, let's just fucking go with it, let's full on commit, and you know what, they did, and, uh, they executed it to perfection, yet it still has, you know, enough, uh, enough, like, you know, wittiness in there to, like, you know, um, appeal to adults as well. Like, you know, the cute little jokes that, you know, maybe seem a little like, oh, you know, but tongue in cheek, but, you know, kids wouldn't really notice that. And if they did, they're not that bad jokes anyway. You know, they're, they're still funny. And, uh, it's also got that skill level where, like, you know, this game can be difficult if, you know, you decide to venture into that difficulty, like, you know, the bonuses and stuff, but, it also gets a. Uh, it can also be easy enough for anybody to tackle. Really, it's just it's the perfect fucking balance for a game. It just really truly is. It's oh look at this. What is that? Mini games unlocked. Play them from the main menu. Yeah, pretty sure that's a scripted unlock. But there you go. We can now do mini games, and I think we probably will do that next episode just to kind of get a break from the adventure here. So it's uh, that'll be pretty exciting. Mini games are real fun, uh, but you don't unlock all of them right away. You have to do, you have to unlock them uh, methodically. I don't know why I put a repeater down there. That squash is now going to. No, he'll still get him. Er? They make that sound too. It's beautiful. Er? Before they kill him. But uh, anyway, yeah. So I mean, it just sucks too. I mean, yeah, because this game was so good, so simple, so well executed. It did put high hopes on them. You know, a lot of pressure on it for a sequel, as it does with all good games. You know, that's the curse that good games fall under. But, you know, maybe that had something to do with why they, you know, fell so short with Plants vs. Zombies 2. They felt pressured because it was such a success. Or, or maybe they just wanted to 
capitalize off of you know the success they had in the first game but either way they uh surprisingly for how well how many good decisions you know they made with this game they really fell short in plants vs zombies 2 which and i mean if we're being realistic here like it killed the franchise plants vs zombies garden warfare their spinoffs not did did not do well at all and um I have to feel like part of that is because after what people saw for PVZ2, they're like, well, fuck it, PVZ is dead. And it essentially is. This is really the only good game that's ever going to stem from the series, you know? It's unfortunate, too, because it had a lot of potential. A lot of potential, but, you know, thankfully, the game they did give us that was good, this one is fucking amazing. I said we were going to use repeaters here, but we've got so much extra sun that fuck it, I'm just going to go all out. Might put some extra lily pads out here too in case any of those crazy zombies spring up in the middle like with a bucket or something and uh, we'll just uh, pelt the shit out of them or we'll be able to throw a squash on it. So you could put other plants here too. You could put a squash right here and he'll squash somebody that comes up in the water. You know, works the same way. Take the guy out because he's got a cone head behind him. They're going real nuts with the bucket heads, though, aren't they? Why does 3 2 have two flags already? You can see they're starting to get crazy, man. Starting to get a little nuts with the flags. I believe later in the game, later levels, they do have uh, three flag levels, I think. Yeah, they do. But that's as far as it goes. There's no I don't think there's any four flag levels aside from like uh in different modes. That newspaper zombie dude's so fucking pissed. Are they gonna kill this guy before he gets to the squash? It looks like they were about to kill him at the same time. Oh, my coin. Too much sun to click. I could kill these guys and put more. Might as well be what I do the water first. Yep, look at that guy spawned right on top of our lily pad, but guess what? Got him. So it's always good to have one of those. Okay, we're gonna have to walnut here, bide our time. And let's think ahead in case shit gets really hairy, which I don't see it happening. We'll put a potato mine back here. Last case scenario. Or you know what? I could just cherry bomb. Didn't even think about that. Oh, this plant. Don't find myself using this one a whole lot. As you can see, it's fucking expensive. At first glance, you can pretty much guess what this dude does. It's a three-peater, so, you know, there's the pea shooter, the repeater, and now the three-peater. You know, the Michael Jordan plant. But uh, what you'd guess this plant does is you put it, set it down, and it shoots three peas instead of two in one row, right? And you say, oh, that's pretty good. 325 compared to 200, and eh, that's pretty cool. And no. I mean, it, first of all, it would be outclassed by, you know, a repeater and a pea shooter which would only cost 300 and shoot three but then again it takes up two spaces but no that's not even what this does it actually as you see shoots peas in three lanes so you set it down and it'll shoot one pea in each lane the lane it's in and the lane above and below it so um that's pretty good it's basically like putting putting three uh pea shooters in three rows you know right in a row um it's more expensive than doing that but it only takes up one space as compared to three so, um, I don't know, take it as you will. I never really find myself with that much excess sun to set it up. But, um, I don't know, I just feel there's better uses. Anyway, we got a new plant, or a new zombie here, the snorkel zombie. This guy is kind of a dick sucker. Basically, he'll go below the water, and he goes super fast, and then he'll come up and, uh, eat your plants. And while he's under the, uh, water there he can't be harmed so let's actually just oh not encountered yet so you have to actually encounter them before it tells you what they do can't get a pre what does this thing say on his shirt i heart zombies or something i heart brains i think that's what it says probably oh he's got the floaties on too how cute they can't swim so funny but anyway yeah these guys are actually annoying so what you want to do for these guys um kind of the same as pole vaulting zombies you know put a lily pad out there way out when they get there so that they have to come up to eat it and then throw like a squash on it or you know just anything on it to keep them occupied maybe a walnut would be 
preferable. You probably, in these levels with snorkel zombies, want to set walnuts at the front of your water on lily pads so that um, they have to come up to eat the walnuts and then they can be fired upon. It's usually the best bet. I don't think we have time for another level here, but I'm going to try to get it out. I guess I'll show you the three, Peter. I mean, with our setup, we're going for excess sun here, so... Uh, get this guy too, and gonna need our, well, might need our repeaters, I don't know, we'll see. Let's do it. I should really vary my setup here and just do random shit, but, eh, uh, you know, that's kind of. That's kind of, uh, I don't know. I mean, I like to just show my prowess in these things and, you know, do the best I can, show you, you know, if you do attack this game strategically, it can be fairly easy okay I just I wasn't supposed to do that I, I guess I shouldn't have bought the lily pad yet but that kind of delayed my production a little bit there it really doesn't make a difference I'm just nitpicking myself here because I haven't died or anything you know I'm just picking my errors to make myself not look as good you know I don't want to seem like I think I'm the best at this game it's not like I do but I like to think I'm pretty good the water is so crystal clear and beautiful great effects man great effects Snorkel zombies probably wouldn't come out until the first uh, flag, I believe. Even if they do come out before that, we can handle it on a, you know, zombie by zombie basis. So we'll probably be okay. So we don't need to set up the walnuts yet. Although it would probably be wise to because they take so long to regenerate. So you know what? I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to do it. Just because walnuts have such a slow recharge rate. The only problem is if a zombie drops in the water now, it's going to start eating on that, and I've got nothing to fire on it. But whatever. I mean, you can't, you can't do everything perfectly here. Bites! Yeah, and obviously, uh, there's some plants you cannot plant on lily pads. For example, potato mines, because it goes underground into the dirt. Doesn't really make sense. It's really the only one I can think of that uh, I think follows that logic, but I could be wrong. Okay, so we've almost got everything set up. We've got a good excess of sun. There we go. These guys are handled. Now let's start doing our three peters. Now generally with three peters, you don't want to put them on the top row or the bottom row because then one of the lanes they're shooting onto is not a real lane so it'll be completely wasted so generally the middle four rows are the best place to put them because then they will still be fully utilized so obviously the best place to put them in is the water the middle the more middle the better because then they will fire upon uh, every row and uh, the best part is the water rows will have double coverage because they are sometimes the most vulnerable and the hardest to uh, emergency manage you know, because... See, but the difference is, look, I've spent 650 sun here on plants, and now these two rows are not covered. So, that's the issue you sometimes run into with the repeaters. But, uh, I'm just gonna squash this guy. It will be up in time before he eats a sunflower. And the great part is he can smash plants behind him, so... Next thing we want to do is... Oh, well, we have enough. Might as well get the three repeaters here, too. Now we just need one right here, and every row will be covered with at least one P. Um, as you can see right here, this row, both, all three of these rows have two coverage, and these two rows have one P coming down them. But as soon as we do this, all four of these rows now have two coverage. Um, these middle ones, I believe, have three P's going down them now, and the top rows only still have one, so... I'm not going to waste money putting a three-peater up there. It'll give coverage, another P coverage to this row too, but it's better to just put a repeater there, I'd say. But as you can see, this is an expensive setup, man. This is what, 1270, no, 1300 sun right here in these four rows. And as you can see, it still didn't give us that much coverage. For this setup right here, that is 1600 sun. And all you've got is, you know, uh, three Ps in this row. Three, All you've got is three Ps shooting at every row, essentially. Is that worth it? Well, maybe. I don't know. But, you know, you can always add uh, supplemental damage to it, too. Throw the repeaters down. I mean, I guess for space-wise, you're getting the most damage per space with this setup. 
but uh, I don't know. Might as well throw some more three peters down there. If you've got a lot of sun, it's worth it. If you're gonna have a lot of sun. But uh, usually, if you've got a lot of sun anyway, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can just throw down repeaters and still win. So, really doesn't make a difference. As you can see, they still get pretty far. So, And here comes the Snorkel Zombie. Now, as you see, he's up right now, so he takes damage. They do die fairly quickly. I believe just the normal zombie amount of hits. Ten. But uh, it really helps that they have something to chew on. But that walnut is getting eaten pretty fast, so we might need to replace it. Good thing we put him out early, right? This may seem stupid, but I'm going to dig up this one. I don't know why I put him there. Didn't think I'd have enough sun to put more three Peters out, honestly, but it's recharged us super fast, too. You know, not that that matters. It'll take you a while to build up that much sun, unless you had, like, three rows of sunflowers. But this is more than enough to cover to the end of this level. It's overkill, it really is, but it's just cool. Cool to show them. Can get confusing, though, when you start putting out multiple, you know, repeaters and three repeaters, because you just don't know. It's hard to tell how many, you know, rows you're, how many peas you have on each row shooting, unless you, like, do the math. But anyway, as you saw there, when I put the squash down, if you have two zombies that are exact close enough on top of each other, uh, if one zombie's within the hitbox of another zombie, okay, see here, this guy, as you see, peas are harmlessly flying over him. This is why you have that. And there you go. But yeah, the squash can sometimes kill two or more zombies at once, assuming they're overlapping. Now this is the thing that'll help with the snorkel zombies immensely. It's the kelp. It's basically a, a squash or a potato mine for the water rose, and you can just set it in there without a lily pad. So um, basically any zombie that runs into it in the water, it will pull down and instantly kill. And it's only 25 uh, sun, so it's very, very useful. Almost an essential, I'd say. Um, but it, the only downside is it recharges extremely slow. But yeah, so that's that. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. In the next episode, we will take on level 3-4. Or actually, you know what? We just unlocked the mini games, So I think we're going to do that next time. Have some fun. A little mini game break. So I'll see you guys then. Peace out, everybody. You know...